Hi folks, so I was feeling compelled, you know, yesterday I did that hour and a half sort of trip down memory lane to some extent with regard to Trump Clinton uh, birth charts for 2016 and Trump Biden birth charts for 2020 and Trump Harris Biden for 2024. And sometimes those of you who've done a reading with me know that sort of I'd like to think of it as a tap that keeps running. The reading may be over, but it sometimes within 24 to 48 hours, I might follow up with a little bit more of something, not just because sometimes you can't put a timeline on astrology. You know, we often, I will have timelines or estimates for how long something will last. And I certainly don't like to, you know, I, I certainly don't like to overstay my welcome. That's not where I'm going with this. But, but the bottom line is, Sometimes you aren't done until you're done. And more than, more than that, it isn't as if you can just sometimes just turn it off. Sometimes you're still thinking about a chart or what someone has brought up during the reading or something along those lines and you want to follow up. And this, this is a little bit like that. And it feels much more conclusive. Yesterday was much more of amusing as I was looking at different charts. And today I feel like I have a summary. It's not conclusive because it really is one hell of an arm wrestle. You cannot count out either of these charts, Trump and Harris. And I'm going to get to RFK in a second, and I'm going to talk about J.D. Vance as well. Um, but there's also a couple of things I wanted to add right up front at the top of this video that concern all of us with regard to where we are at. As you know, I have said, and I've said this lots of times, May, June, and July are forward-moving months, and August, Mercury goes retrograde. And during August, and this is much more personal thing than it is a public thing, I find, but it'll be interesting now that we're a little bit more attuned to the public nature of things. It'll be interesting to see, oh yes, and thank you so much, by the way, to everybody who did not make the comments political. I am so grateful for that, and, and please, continue to do the same here. This is meant to be thoughts on birth charts as opposed to uh, getting into a political discussion either way. So so my plea and my request again to please not get political in the comments. Um, it's a, as I said before in yesterday's video, it's, a, it's an emotional and challenging uh, time for everybody and there are other forms that are better for this. This is purely meant to be uh, an astrological and I certainly, I think I, I, I'm, I'm um, I'm certainly going to do my best to not, you know, kind of to not talk about who I'm supporting or not supporting or anything of the sort at this. That's not what the purpose of this video is. So thank you very much to everyone for, 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 for doing that in the comments for yesterday's video. Um, during August, when Mercury is retrograde, apart from what we know of and think of as Mercury retrograde shenanigans, the biggest thing that we're looking for Mercury retrograde is to tell us and to clarify for us where we need to get real about something. You know, Mercury, the planet of what we mentally know and facts and details and what we think we know and what is going on here, it goes, hold on a second, I need to reverse. We need to go over a few things again. There's certain things that you are not seeing. There's certain things that are not clear to you. There's certain things that you may be intuitively wondering about but it is time for me to deliver some facts so that after I go direct again on August the 28th, you can incorporate those. And often I find that the dates when Mercury is going retrograde, August 4th, and going direct August 28th, can act sort of parentheses during this period. So things can come up around August the 4th, then that then find some sort of a resolution around August the 28th. Uh, August 17th, 18th can be important months of this retrograde as well, when the retrograde Mercury conjuncts the Sun. So for everybody, including the candidates as individuals, there's this question of moving forward, galloping forward in May, June, and July, and then August revealing something to each of us, certainly on a personal and an individual level. Whether this plays out on a public level or not, we're going to have to wait and see. One of the things I said in yesterday's video was I wondered and mused about whether something would change in a way that might affect Trump's candidacy or Harris's candidacy or even Biden's decision. And I have to say, 
the, the biggest question mark when I look at the charts sits a little bit more with Trump at this point in time. But even then, I think we need to assume and be clear about the fact that the two June and July Capricorn full moons and what came up around the full moon is not just because the July 21st full moon occurred while Mercury was in its shadow period does not mean that what came up around that full moon is up for discussion or up for redefinition when Mercury goes retrograde. It'll be interesting to see. And the July 21st full moon was absolutely centered around the Biden-Harris announcement. The day, you know, the full moon occurred and within five or six hours, uh, President Biden sent out his memo saying that he was no longer going to run and that he was endorsing and supporting uh, his vice president. So that was about as full moon as it gets. So it's very likely possible that decisions were reached as he got to the full moon. And bingo, there it was. The full moon occurred, the message came out. Whatever we've been decided and working, been working towards in May, June, and July, but particularly while I, I don't always find that Mercury retrograde makes me redefine what came up while Mercury was in shadow. It's always intriguing to me when Mercury is going back over its shadow degrees, whether something that I have started to agree to or commit to uh, comes up for redefinition. It's fine that it does. But for me, it's a much bigger redefinition that comes up. It's a much bigger clarity. Indeed, I find the things that come up for discussion while Mercury is retrograde for greater clarity are other projects or decisions that might have been made while Mercury was retrograde the last time or the time before. So this is my way of saying, I don't think it's entirely fair for me to assume that just because Mercury is going retrograde, that decisions that have been made in May, June, and July are going to get reversed. That's not what this Mercury retrograde is primarily about. And the Mercury retrograde for Trump is fascinating because it's briefly in the second house, but a lot of it is in his first house. For Donald Trump, who is a Leo rising, his new year technically started about four days ago. He's already had Mercury in certain elements of his new year started in July. July the second, third, Mercury came into the first house for him. Um, Venus came into the first house for him on the 11th, 12th of July. And the new year starts up, but by the time we get to the new moon in Leo, which would really kick off his new year, we have Mercury retrograded at that point in time. We also have Venus in his second house, or starting to get close to entering his second house at that time. And during August, Venus will start to transit his second house, which could bring expenses, but could also bring financial opportunities. But the promise, his new year really doesn't get going till September. And the promise of what August may bring for him in terms of his income or his sense of self-worth or Venus transiting the second house, to some extent the first and second house, really is going to get going after that Virgo new moon on September 2nd, 3rd. And for anything that came up financially or income-wise uh, as an opportunity during August, we will only see it increase and manifest as we get past September, October, November. Indeed, we might see the biggest part of the manifestation uh, in the Mercury retrograde that occurs and starts around Thanksgiving time. Now, the new year for a Leo rising person this year, because the August 4th new moon occurs on the same day that Mercury goes retrograde, whatever it is, that is being brought up for Leo rising folks during July, during August, is suspended and the new year doesn't really get going until September and then it starts to gather momentum. So even though the technically the new year started when the sun entered Leo a few days ago, there's still a sense of August needing to be incorporated. We move forward as much as we can during July, but we've got to contend with what August is going to bring back for us, bring back to us, the details it's going to deliver to us, 
what we need to incorporate, what we get clarity on, what we continue to do, what we continue to not do, uh, what doors are open to us, what doors are closed to us, uh, what sort of a reality check we're going to have to receive and then incorporate into our plans as we move past into September. What this means for Donald Trump, I do not know, but, but there's the sense of the new year kind of starting up then. And also for anyone who's looking at the Leo rising chart and looking at how it gets going and looking to see whether, how it supports Trump with regard to election, his election, it can, it can, because you could argue easily that the other thing is that in many ways, April, May, June, and July have been very good months for Trump in terms of his visibility for the simple reason that he's had so many planets transit through his 10th house. For much of July and even part of June, he's had Mars going over his 10th house. You know, which gave him the vigor, gave him the energy and the protection. It did make him susceptible to attacks. But prior to that, you know, since Taurus season began, in, in many respects, his most visible months of the year in terms of just sheer consistency are now behind him. But that doesn't mean that something couldn't possibly come to fruition by the Taurus full moon in November. That Taurus full moon in November for Donald Trump is a very close to his midheaven in the same way that the 2016 full moon for Donald Trump was very close to his midheaven. The 2020 full moon for Trump was a good 15 degrees or so, I think, away from his midheaven, as I recall. So in terms of the full moon after election day, the position of that full moon close to his midheaven echoes back to 2016, not 2020. But the idea that seeds have been planted by him between, uh, let's say March 21st to June 21st, with June 21st to June 3rd, to, 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 to July, June 21st to July 21st, kind of delivering results, harvesting the rewards of the seeds that he had planted. Uh, he got the, I mean, he secured the nomination. And then the new year starts on the 21st of July. We get into something needs to be dealt with for all of us individually, discovered, dealt with, incorporated in August. And then after September, October, November, he gets to harvest and build on his new year beginning with potentially some sort of career related culmination on, you know, as, as he heads to election day of this year and the full moon after that. Now, some of you might think, well, based on the way I'm talking, I'm predicting a Trump victory. As I mentioned to you yesterday, he has certain things going for that in his chart. But the biggest question is his eclipses are getting ready to move into the eighth house. And I have rarely seen anyone whose eclipses are moving into the eighth house have a career related moment. The thing I want us all to take from this with regard to our own birth charts is do not assume that whatever may have come up for you around the 21st of July, around that full moon, is up for revision necessarily. If a decision was made by then, if there was some sort of culmination, if you got some sort of job. Now, certain details as you made your way through May, June, July, certain details that could have led to the culmination around July 21st may need to be looked at again. There may be things that are in your blind spot that have to be looked at in August. And then we'll kind of incorporate and take it from there. But just because the 21st full moon happened while Mercury was in its shadow period does not mean that those decisions get revised. So I had spent a certain amount of time in yesterday's longer video speculating about whether Biden would change his mind and decide that he would 
run again with Harris as his VP, you know, and kind of stay in the game for a year, year and a half, and then have Harris take over. Now, he's not going to say it, put it that way. But in some ways, as I even mentioned yesterday, that would have been the smarter strategy, at least astrologically. But it is what it is at this point in time. And it's not, again, you know, just like Trump. Harris has certain uh, things not going for her in her chart and certain things very much going for her in her chart. The North Node eclipses favor her very strongly. They're going into her career house. I did not look at a chart for J.D. Vance because I cannot find a birth time for him anywhere. And there's no point without a birth time. There just isn't. For RFK Jr., someone, one of you brought up RFK Jr., he has a Leo rising based on the charts that are available for him publicly, if we can trust those. So his chart interpretation would be the same as Donald Trump's, who's also a Leo rising, which is career house full moon in November, New Year starting in a certain direction, In some ways, in many ways, when we look at Trump's chart, the most visible and inauguratory, inauguratory period for him was between May of last year, 23 to May of this year, when Jupiter was going over the 10th house. So if he does get the election, if he does become president again, it's going to be as a result of building on that Jupiter transit and the eclipses that occurred for him in his 10th house of career between August, September 2021 to October 2023. He was very much in the public eye during that time. And with Saturn's entry into Pisces, his 8th house since March 2023, some of that visibility, no question. Now, the 10th house is visibility. It's notoriety. It is fame. The attention does not have to always be positive. It just puts you in the public eye, and different people get to have different reactions around what may be happening to you. Certainly since September of, certainly since March of 2023, since Saturn entered his 8th house. And this, I think, I can say with some security, and we all can, no matter how one feels about him, you know, with, with, with whatever it is that he's been dealing with, with regard to financial consequences, legal consequences, those are very eighth house issues. Who's he tied to? Who's money owed to? How much does he need to pay to sort this out and that out? And some of the actions with regard to not respecting gag orders or acting in a certain way, Saturn is a very conservative planet. And Saturn will be all for a client trying to stabilize a certain part of the chart. But you've really got to follow the straight and narrow. You've kind of really got to be respectful and you've really got to be, it's just the way Saturn is basically saying nose to the grindstone. What are your liabilities? Where's the bleeding? What needs to be stabilized? Where do you need to fight what you need to fight if that's what you believe you need to do? And you do it with integrity in the right way, in a conservative way. And by that, I mean conservative behavior. It's not the time to go rogue. And if you do go rogue, then Saturn will have a tendency to slap you on the wrist. And we've certainly seen examples of that. But part of the visibility between September, August, September of 2021 but certainly since March 2023 has been in that area, but there has been visibility. If the presidency comes into view and Trump gets it, it's going to be as a result of Jupiter going over his 10th house, conjuncting Uranus on April the 20th, inaugurating a path that is right for him from a career perspective, changes for which we will start to see, you know, till that will continue to unfold till May of next year. It is still a bit of an open question for me as to what that direction is, because it is the end of a 12-13 year cycle and the start of a 12-13 year cycle. So 
So coming into August, Trump has had a great deal of visibility behind him, not only because of so many planets going over the sign of Taurus recently over the past few months, but also now with his new year beginning, August is a bit of a pause, but then there's an expansiveness after that. The questions of what is really starting up for him as you look at Jupiter's transit through his ninth and 10th houses in 22 and 23. Is this what he wants to do next? Is this what he is going for? Is this the ending and a new beginning? It can't be viewed in the same lens, through the same lens as the presidency in 2016. If Trump, the full moon favors Trump in November, which sounds like a very small thing, but it's not. The recent activity in Taurus, the new year starting, the uh, kind of Jupiter still in the 11th building on Jupiter, having been in the 10th, all of these kind of, th there's enough, and even the timing of Venus going over the second, but then the activity and action really starting to increase, uh, September, October, November, we don't get Mercury retrograde again until Thanksgiving. By that time, the election is done and the full moon is done in Taurus as well. The eclipses don't necessarily favor Trump, except that till June of next year, the North Node eclipses in Aries is still active. Those could talk to where he wants to go next. But what I have said to you, and I will say this, make this a final point in summary, otherwise I run the risk of doing yesterday's video all over again, is that his preoccupation, if he gets the presidency, well, whether he gets the presidency or not, his preoccupation very shortly as he enters next year is going to be with regard, if, 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 Again, with someone like Trump, with someone like Biden, you've got to factor age into the equation. And I certainly am very clear, I am not going to get a telegram from God letting me know about when someone's time is up, whether it is my own or someone else's. There are certain things as an astrologer I can try and dabble in, but the universe, God, spirit always wraps my hand and lets me know what is for me to try and figure out and what is out of my realm, out of not for me to know, not for me to try and divine. And mortality is one of those things. I mean, the relatively famous astrologer, for those of us who do astrology work, who wrote a whole book and did research on trying to predict death times and, you know, was wrong about predicting. So these, there, there, you are not, we are not going to be given a heads up about everything that is going to happen to us. I, as an astrologer, cannot predict where my life, I can make guesses, but I do not know how my life is going to unfold on a day-to-day -day basis. I can look at my chart and try and divine it as much as I can. Forget it. That's not why we are here. Some element of his time, especially as he heads into 2025, is go the primary preoccupation is going to be investing in himself finding the right partnerships, the right investments. It sounds like a weird thing to say. Stabilizing and sorting out his debts, his liabilities. It's going to be a lot more personal if he gets the presidency for him with regard to what it is that he's going to focus on, what he's going to sort out. And one of the things as we we can look at, and there's also certain element I think I would imagine in Trump's life that we do not have visibility to. One of the questions over the last two weeks, as two months before the lunar eclipse on September the 17th that I would ask is, what has he been sorting out? What has come up for him in that eighth house shared resources sector that is going to escalate for the next two months? Where is he going to have to draw the line. What is growing? What does he need to tackle? What does he need to lean into? What does he need to stabilize? What does he need to sort out? And there's an open question for me as far as the presidency is concerned as to 
who he's shaking hands with. When the North Node eclipses move into the eighth house, as I have said to you, in most cases, it is a question of evaluating relationships with an eye to the future. Shall I move in with so-and-so to see if we can get married eventually? Have I been happy in my marriage of X number of years and do I want to split up or separate? Oh, I think we're going to get X, Y, Z in an inheritance. What does this mean for us as a family? How do we invest this? How do we do this? Oh, I've always wanted to move forward and do this startup. I'm sick of corporate life. Let me see who I can partner with and what investments I can set up. And it's that last angle professionally that is intriguing. Because once the North Node eclipses move through the 8th and the 7th houses, which takes us towards 2028, as long as there is no effect on Trump's life or mortality, then when the North Node eclipses move into the 6th house, Trump is going to reimagine his work life. But those 8th house eclipses, unless you are setting something up and looking for partnerships with an eye to the future or dissolving them, I don't always see the North Node moving into the 8th house as all of a sudden being vitally public in the job sphere. That said, there's enough going on in Trump's chart that makes it that I would say you cannot write him off as a weak candidate in this election. If you factor in the Taurus eclipses, the North Node eclipses, 2021 to 2023, Jupiter in Taurus, 23 to 24, Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. You tie that to the Mars-Uranus conjunction on July the 15th. Yes, there was an assassination attempt, but he was also very much in the public eye. And the full moon in November is at that same point, conjuncting Uranus. And the full moon in 2016 for him was also conjuncting his midheaven. Okay, that's what I want to say in summary as far as Trump is concerned. I do, I have a, out of everybody, I have a question mark a little bit for him as to what happens in August as he heads towards September, October, November. What What is it that he's dealing with that may not be visible to us with regard to um, partnerships and finances and what he feels he needs to sort out? The other date, eclipse-wise, you know, on October the 2nd, the solar eclipse shows him releasing um, a sort of immediate environment and continuing to move towards an environment that might be right for him. New social circles, new friends, new exposure. All of that could be interpreted as going one way or the other. But it certainly could be interpreted as... Uh, uh, um, positive as far as the presidency is concerned. Again, unless something drastic happens and he just decides to veer the other way altogether. That part of things is fine. The Mars retrograde in December and January in his first and second houses, you know, it doesn't affect his, the presidential election, so I should just leave that be. If anything, Mars coming into Leo in November before it goes retrograde. I mean, Mars is going through Kamala Harris's first house right now. Mars entered Gemini on the 20th of July. And boy, can we see it. I mean, just look at the conferences and everything. She's, I mean, Mars in the first. Energy, vitality, boundaries, uh, coming out of the gate, expressing yourself. Um, I mean, she seems, Mars is a leadership planet. She is coming across in a the sort of publicity blitz that has followed after the 21st as presidential. Now Mars at some point is going to go into the second. Sagittarius is in the third. Would wait, Gemini. Cancer Leo. So Mars is going to go into a second and a third house and going to be retrograde between her third and second. Whereas for Trump, it's going to be 12th and 1st. That happens during the time of the, the inauguration. The other thing we have to pay attention to is that the inauguration time in January is a very much resonant with the Virgo South Node lunar eclipse 
on March 17th of next year or thereabouts. Is it March 17th, March 21st, whatever it is. No, it's not, hold on. March 14th or something like that. And again for Trump, it shows him releasing his, the eclipses don't, the North Node, South Node eclipses don't favor him that strongly. It shows him releasing something with regard to his own, the eclipses that favored him in 2016 do not favor him so much in 2020. But there are other factors that give him momentum. My only question with Trump is, is something going to show up for him with regard to what he feels he absolutely has to manage with regard to his shared resources and partnerships? Or is he forming partnerships that are going to be the bedrock of his, who is he shaking hands with? Now it's interesting, August, we're all gonna feel the Jupiter Saturn square, Jupiter, in Trump's 11th house of friends, network, social circles, Saturn in the 8th. Pay up. Stabilize the 8th house. Shared resources, debts, loans. What is owed to you? What is owed from you? Do the work. <sighs> we'll leave it at that. With Harris, the eclipses favor her, and especially these last two weeks insofar as they echo a lunar eclipse in a career house on September the 17th and the week of inauguration when she sees her releasing something home, land, real estate related uh, in order to support her career direction. That could go either way. It could even mean that somehow she's planning at that point in time to leave DC and the career things direction is taking her in a different path or direction altogether. The 12th house full moon in November is a little too reminiscent for me with Hillary Clinton's 12th house full moon in November. And she has Saturn, Harris has Saturn in her 10th, transiting her 10th since March, 2023. Now Saturn in your 10th, if you do the work, can reward you, but it is nose to the grindstone time. And with Saturn, you have to make sure that your goals are correct, that you're working towards the right thing, and that the word with Saturn's transit over the 10th is responsibility and leadership. You may well be given the opportunity or opportunities to gain visibility and leadership, but you have got to, with Saturn, earn it. You've got to be appropriately strategic, leadership-oriented, delegate effectively, have the right team around you. Saturn is going to be, okay, you want to be CEO? Let us put you through the ring. I mean, it is challenge after challenge after challenge. This hurdle, this hurdle, this hurdle, this hurdle. What's the right strategic move? What's the right strategic move? What it makes an effective leader? What makes it it's just like, bam, 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 bam. And you've got to, you've got to scale up with Saturn. The North Node Eclipse is coming into the 10th house. We'll ask her to, with Saturn in the 10th, I've seen it go either way. People who rise to the Saturnian channel challenge will be rewarded. If people are not following the goals that are right for them and they do not scale up strategically to be able to handle and manage the responsibilities and opportunities that are given to them, then Saturn will teach them the right lessons around that. And you will carry those lessons with you for a long, long time. Saturn going over the 10th is not an easy transit. So again, both candidates have things that seem to be supporting them, no question, and other things that don't. I refer to it as an arm wrestle. Whoever you're supporting, work needs to be done. In Harris's case, where the direction is going, I get to some extent, even though it's a bumpy ride. In Trump's case, I find the fact that the presidency could be an opportunity for him to sort, I mean, it makes total sense, doesn't it? An opportunity for him to sort out 8,000, 7,000 issues, legal issues, financial issues, 
partnerships for the future and even now making part you know but don't discount that chart don't discount that chart do not discount it with Jupiter having just gone through his 10th it's not that he's not playing the same game he played coming into 2016 it's a fresh new 12 13 year cycle that started up for him between May 23 and May 24. There you go. That's really all I wanted to say. I wanted to close out uh, yesterday's video. I was still kind of, the tap was still leaking. And I, wa I did want to also clarify and say we're going to continue to be in forward motion please you know i'm looking at the astrology of next week and a lot of it is still very very positive we've had some really nice and now the oppositions to pluto are done i mean mars is going to oppose pluto later in the year boy is that going to be interesting but mars is going to oppose pluto later in the year and th that's going to be it's it's it might it might with mars retrograde and direct it might make for a violent time but that's not happening for a while. The anxiety producing oppositions to Pluto are now done with this full moon on this past Saturday, Sunday. And at least till the end of July, even till August 1st, August 2nd to some extent, but till the end of July, which is the middle of next week, stay in action. It's unlikely to me that, you know, it could be that stuff that you are if you're applying for jobs or you're doing so it's 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 possible that that comes up for revision but typically the things that come up for revision when mercury retrograde are the things that start up while mercury is retrograde and they come up for revision when mercury goes direct so i did want to leave for everyone whatever it was if if for some people certain things came to a culmination around the 21st full moon in Capricorn on July 21st. Don't assume that because it's in Mercury shadow period that it's going to get undone. You may learn facts about something that reached a culmination around that point in time, but I would hazard to say that that was developing all through May, June, and July to some extent. That Mercury retrograde is really about bringing up facts and giving us a reality check around things that we may have built up some fantasy around or skipped in our rush to move forward while Mercury was direct in May, June, and July. All right, if you would like me to take a look at your birth chart and do a reading for you or make an easy to read birth chart for you, my email address is in the description area below. You can contact me there. I can get you information about rates and offerings. Uh, there's a thanks button. You can use that to contribute to the channel. Uh, I will not be posting videos on Facebook and Twitter. The end of an era for me uh, after the end of July. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And next to the subscribe button is a bell icon. Hover over that. There's a wiggly bell on top. Click on that and you'll be notified when I do new videos. Um, if you found any... Thank you for bearing with me through these kind of political-ish videos. The next video I'm going to do is going to go back to normal programming. We're going to do the weekly overview for next week uh, as we head into the weekend. So so this is not turning into a regular feature. Um, but it's been fun musing through stuff like this. So if anyone's actually watched these videos, etc., thank you for that. Feel free, if you find this content useful, feel free to tell people who might find the content useful and... Gosh, this whole closing thing today just seems like it's going on forever. I feel like I'm writing War and Peace all over again. Um, and, and, and feel free to comment and like the video. It gives a greater circulation on YouTube. Okay? Thank you for bearing with me through all this. And the next video is going to be the weekly overview for next week. And please try and stay in action. Um, by the time we get to August 1st and particularly August 2nd, we're going to start to feel the energy of that Mercury retrograde, and we're also going to be in the dark of the moon. So I would say for the next five or six days, but you know, I'd say go for it. Try and get as much done as you possibly can. All right. Thank you. Take care.